YouTube, how's it going? I'm Mark and welcome back to Swamp and Stomp. Today I'm going to be showing you how I built this casting deck on my low 1236 John boat and some of the features that I put into it. Now I know that this video is going to bring in a lot of fishermen because I'm building a fishing casting deck, but we do a lot of hunting on this channel and if you're interested in getting started with hunting, one of the items that you might find yourself looking for is a tree stand. And We currently have a giveaway going on where we're giving away a Summit Viper SD tree stand and you can win it for free and all you have to do is make sure that you're subscribed to our channel and drop a comment on this video right here. So one of the nice things about having two hosts for Swamp and Stomp is that a lot of times we do things a little bit differently and that means that you guys get to see a few different ways that you can go about doing the same things. So in this case, we both got ourselves some John boats and initially the goal was to set this up for duck hunting, but I understand that having this for just a small part of the year doesn't make any sense. So I wanted to make it capable of doing a number of other things like fishing and I wanted there to be a casting deck. So the first thing I did is I went on YouTube and I started looking for a few different ways to build a casting deck and honestly I didn't like any of the ways that I found so I went about it my own way. One of the features that I wanted in this casting deck is I wanted it to be easily removable and I didn't want to have to drill any holes into the boat because I really don't want to do any damage that's unnecessary so that if I ever want to sell it again it'll keep its value. So now I'm going to take it apart and I'm going to show you some of the features that I put into this deck. When I first started designing this thing, I had a really elaborate plan to put this whole frame underneath here so that none of it would sag and it would be really solid. But when I got here, I actually just laid a piece of plywood across the front of the boat and stood on it and there was hardly any flex. So my plan completely changed and this is sort of what I made on the fly and I'm really happy with how it came out. So when I put the piece of plywood across the front of the boat, the only place that I was really experiencing any flex was right down the center of the piece of plywood. So I had a couple cross members put on it that were gonna give it a little extra support. So I've got one going across the back right here. This is a little two by two. And then I have two two by fours going across as well. And the reason for that is because they create like a, a catchment point for the, uh, the hatches so that when I put them in, they don't fall through. So I'm gonna put it into the boat right now and then I'm gonna explain how all these pieces work uh, in the context of the boat. So as I mentioned, one of the things that I wanted to do is to make this so that it didn't require any holes to be drilled in the boat. So I put these tabs along the front and when I put the platform in place, I simply slide those tabs right underneath this front Part of the boat and then the back just sort of slots into place. Now I set up the cross members so that they have the perfect spacing to catch right in between the side rails of the boat. So I had this cross member here to support the back end of the piece of plywood so it doesn't flex when I stand on it. But because there's a second seat in the boat, I wanted to make it possible for a second person to sit up front here. And obviously there's not enough space for their legs and I wanted it to be possible for them to face forward. So I made this hatch right here that can flip forward. Um, but in order to make that happen, I had to figure out a way to support the rest of it uh, with a subframe. So I built this little frame that goes right here and I later realized that I could use this to uh, attach the back end to the boat as well. So I can simply take this little platform that I built, which has these little tabs just like the front does, and they slide right underneath the back seat. And I can then screw that down and it holds the whole thing down and I'll put the battery right on top of that so it creates some weight to hold the whole thing in place. Now it's pretty hard to reach some of the areas that are in the front of the boat here from that back hatch. So I made another hatch right here. And this can be used as like an anchor cubby. As you can see, it gives you access to the front of the hull, but it also gives you access to this shelf right here. So you can store some smaller items underneath there. And you may notice that there was 
a couple uh, support beams right here and they rest right on the edge of this shelf to create support right there. Now, if you were to use this as an anchor cubby, you can have your anchor in there, pull it out, throw it in the water, and you can run your line right through this little hole, and I'll have a cleat mounted right here so that you can anchor up really easily. And it wouldn't be a shallow water fishing boat if it didn't have a trolling motor. You can mount that right here, off to the side, and out of the way. So now you can cruise along the shoreline, casting lures, catching bass, snook, or redfish, or whatever you may want. All right, there you have it, guys. That's my casting platform for my John boat. If you have any questions or comments, make sure that you drop those below. And if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, make sure that you do that by clicking right here. We've got some other modifications that we've done on John boats, and you can see those by clicking right here. Or if you want to watch some of our hunting videos, look at these videos right here.